Today we're gonna to be looking at Geiger counters, just to kind of give you an idea of what's out there uh, and the price points and features that you will find associated with that. So let's get into it. Today's uh, climate of uh, possible nuclear war hanging in the air and other stuff like that, I think it's good for people to uh, understand what ionizing radiation is and to have a way to detect it in case uh, something bad happens. And so uh, I personally would uh, recommend uh, getting a Geiger counter. Now there's going to be a whole uh, kind of spectrum of uh, prices in this video of uh, things that are uh, kind of expensive and things that are very affordable. Uh, and we'll kind of go over the features of each and what you're kind of, um, what you should be expecting to get uh, out of your money and um, stuff like that. Geyer counters don't have to be all about doom and gloom, like with nuclear war. Uh, they can actually be very educational. I uh, have a friend of mine that has a son, Wyatt, that has a Geiger counter and he's five. And uh, it's one of those things that him and his dad uh, go out and explore uh, looking for radioactive uh, items. And I know that may sound uh, pretty horrific to some people that don't know what radiation is, uh, but uh, the way they're doing it is very safe. Uh, usually they're going to um, uh, aircraft museums and stuff like that. And usually places like that will have a bunch of uh, radioactive gauges doped with radium. And so they're quite radioactive and uh, it seems like it's pretty fun for him and they really enjoy it. And he's learning something in the process as well. So I would encourage uh, people to maybe look into getting a Geyer counter for their kids. And I know that sounds kind of strange, but I do think it's important. I think it's important for people to learn early on uh, what uh, radiation is, what ionizing radiation is. and how uh, it's all around us and to and to understand that you better understand the world and I think it would uh, kind of help the world along in a big way if people uh, understood the world a bit more uh, than what they do now. So first up is the Rad Eye B20. This is the one I use on most of my videos and I have come to really like it. Uh, but currently right now it runs a little over $2,000 which is about $800 more than what I paid for it originally back in 2017. Uh, but it's a very solid detector and it works for me. The problem with the rat eye is that it's expensive and it's mainly geared towards government agencies. And so its availability is kind of hard to come by. Uh, well, maybe I shouldn't say that. It's just kind of a pain in the butt to get because you have to call up a uh, Thermo Fisher or a uh, Fisher Scientific and get a quote from them and try and build out a list to buy this. Now, uh, I uh, bought this one uh, back in 2017. Uh, I haven't seen a need to get it recalibrated and they do sell calibration systems for this, but the problem is, is that they're all super expensive. Even the communication cable to just have this talk to a computer is around four to $500. And if that doesn't sound like a ripoff to you, then obviously you don't know much about government spending, which is what this detector is mainly uh, aimed for. It's mainly aimed for government agencies, and that's who's primarily buying this. I actually did see a couple of these at the San Onofre Nuclear Power Generating Station when I did that video. Uh, so this is something that is used in the industry, but it's a little uh, kind of overkill for a lot of people, but for me, it works uh, tremendously well. So let's see how it stacks up against these sources. Uh, it's showing a little bit higher than normal background radiation because I do have a couple of uh, sources that are right next to me. So let's see what this looks like. First up, we're gonna look at the uranium glass plate or the Vaseline glass, what it's commonly called.
These are americium buttons. And they're very radioactive if you uh, take them out of the glass. But let's see what they read through the glass. Next up is this uranium glaze tile. Next up is a sample of cesium-137. Now this is a good one to test against because this is probably the isotope that you would more than likely run into in a fallout cloud type of situation if there was some type of uh, nuclear event. So let's see how that responds. Next up, I have an old radium military compass. Now on to the high test. First off, we got this nice piece of uranium, which is extremely spicy. I'm gonna turn on the rat eye. And already you can tell, I'm gonna cover up the, the sound, but it is extremely radioactive. 280 counts per minute. 300. 300 and 6,000 counts per minute off of this piece of uranium ore. Now on to the highest source I have here. This is this uh, Pyrotronics smoke detector that has a radium source in here. I've made a couple videos about this source and it's uh, pretty hot. So let's uh, get to the post inside of here and use that as the test. There it is. Most radioactive thing I own. It's very hot. It's a bunch of radium 226, about 40 microcuries. Let's see how the Geiger counters respond to this. All right, let's see how this rat eye B20 does. All right, now it's an overload. And it's about like, you know, a couple inches away from the front of the detector. All right, let's move on. So this is the Ludlum model 14C. And these are very solid Geiger counters. They're built very tough, and I found this one actually on eBay. You can buy them from Ludlum site, but uh, there's plenty of used ones on eBay if you're looking for one. Usually, a this one's a Model 14C. Uh, they have Model 3s that are just fine, that work great, uh, especially with a pancake probe or some type of scintillator. Then there's also Model 12s out there. There's a ton of the style of... Geyer counters that are out there and they work very well. It does have the ability to take different kinds of probes so it can be disconnected. And switched out for different types of probes. Now this is a very solid detector it uses uh, two D cell batteries. This also has a different scale for different radiation levels. This particular model has a high limit function built into it. It actually has a detector right here in the front. So let's open that up really quick and see what that looks like. Yeah, 
The good thing about these type of detectors is that you do have the ability to fix it if a component breaks, as opposed to the other ones which are primarily software driven. This one's all analog, as you can see right there in the front. That's the high limit tube right here. And let's see how it responds to this plate. Let's see how it responds to the americium buttons. And here's how it responds to the compass. Here's how it responds to the CZ-137 source. You can always turn off the clicker on this very easily. It looks like I have to go up one step higher and reset the needle. This one is also off scale. And it's about as close as the rat eye was to it. So it's a very spicy source. A lot of alpha, a lot of beta, and a decent amount of gamma coming off here as well. Next up is the Radicode 101. And this is a scintillation detector. It actually has a crystal inside of this little part here, that's a cesium iodide crystal doped with thallium. Now this is gonna be a little bit different than the pancake detectors because it's gonna be limited that it can't actually detect alpha radiation and it can't really see beta radiation that well either. But let's see how it does against these sources. Now, scintillation detectors are a little more sensitive to lower level gammas, and that's what these americium buttons emit very well, is low level gammas. So it responds much better than the pancake style detectors do. So instantly, the Radicode 101 is freaking out. That is not happy. Uh, almost 400. There we go, 400. 400 microsieverts an hour. That's uh, it's a very strong source. 
This detector also has the ability to connect to a smartphone and to do gamma spectroscopy, which will actually allow you to identify what you're looking at as far as a radioactive element goes, uh, which is pretty cool. And it can connect with Android phones right now, but apparently an iPhone uh, app is in the works, but it is not out yet. Still, this is a, a pretty cool little device and I use it now to track radiation levels when I'm out exploring. Next up is the Better Geiger radiation detector. This is also a scintillation detector. It has a crystal inside of there and is very sensitive to gamma radiation. Turn off the clicker there, turn it back on, and you can cycle through a couple different modes on this. As you can see, it doesn't respond too well to this plate because this plate emits a lot of beta and alpha radiation not too much gamma. Sounds pretty angry. It's like, looks like it's given like 118 microsieverts per hour, up to 120. Interesting that this better Geiger is uh, giving less of a dose rate than the Radicode, and it makes me wonder uh, which one is compensating for the energy level and which one is correct. Hard to say. I would say the definitive answer would probably be the Radi with the gamma filter on it to see exactly what the dose rate is. Might have to try that out here in a sec. So that's the other advantage that the Radi B20 has is that you can actually use it in conjunction with uh, filters. So let's uh, take out this gamma filter here and pop it on and see what the dose rate is. And when you put this on, it automatically switches over to microsieverts because there's a little magnet in here that just it senses and it knows to switch over so let's see what this uh, reads So it looks like this one is also reading around 400, 440 uh, 
microsieverts per hour, just the same as the Radicode 101. So it makes me wonder uh, who is correct. Uh, is the better Geiger correct or is the Radi B20 with a gamma filter on it, is that the correct dose rate of gamma radiation? Along with beta, I'm sure this isn't just blocking all the all the beta radiation. I'm sure some is actually getting through, but uh, interesting to see. I mean, that's on contact. So this number is like on contact. Like I have it like right up against it. So this is the GMC 320. Uh, I've seen other people use these Geiger counters before and I've never really been too impressed by them. They always seem like they're kind of uh, not built entirely solid, but they do work. So let's see how this responds to these radioactive sources. That's the problem with these type of detectors is that it's going to take a while for it to get up to its maximum value because it looks like it has to keep recalculating the reading. So I might just leave it here for a second. Yeah, this is just taking too long. Ooh, it's angry. See, that's the problem with these type of detectors. It's going to take so long for it to actually get to its final dose. I'm just going to put it down so I don't have to hold this. Okay, that's about as much time as I'm willing to let this one uh, sit for because that's just taken way too long to get to a final count. Uh, that's why I really don't like these. It's just, it just takes too long for it to get uh, to the final count to calculate the final count or final dose. And so uh, I don't really like this one that much. But I know a lot of people like it because it has uh, logging. You can actually log... Uh, radiation events, but it's just, I don't know. I don't really like long response times. That's the problem. This is a kind of a interesting little Geiger counter. It's like almost like a pen that you could just like stick in your uh, pocket and just walk around with.
Uh, this also uses a Geiger-Muller tube that's right in here. Let's see how this responds. So that's the problem with this one is that it, once it reaches the alarm, it, you don't hear the clicks anymore. It's just alarm. So I kind of don't like that about this. This one's pretty cool because of the size, kind of like the Radicode 101. And it has a good size to it where you can just stick it in your pocket. So this is showing, it looks like 60, 80, 160, 200, 220, 230. So it's capping out at around 230, 238. Yeah, so it's got size, but it's a uh, menu system kind of blows. Uh, it seems like it's responding pretty quickly, but I don't know if I trust that number. Looks like it's over responding a bit. Definitely the highest number I've seen so far. This is a Hanshin HC2022. I've never ever heard of this uh, Geyer counter, but it's in the same price point as all those other ones. And so let's just check this one out. Doesn't really respond to the plate. Looks like there's a little bit of response from the tile. This is the anamorisium buttons. Not sure where the I guess the tube is right there. It's not really responding to the buttons. That's a little more active than it was with the other sources, that's for sure. As far as the clicker goes. Still, this is the problem you get when you uh, kind of run into these cheaper uh, items here is that it just takes a, a while for uh, the final dose rate to really show up. I mean, it's climbing, it's getting up there. I don't know if that's some sort of alarm. Kind of sounds like it doesn't sound like clicks anymore. Looks like it's 125, 126. So, so kind of the same as that Mira one. Yeah, it looks like when it goes over 100 microsieverts, it goes into alarm. So I guess this works. It's just not a very good detector as far as I'm concerned. I'm sure it will go up higher, but I'm kind of don't like to hold this source for too long. So I didn't really didn't even want to review this one, uh, but it just came with the package of all the other ones. 
And uh, it seems like the one that's probably, uh, I don't know, the least amount of quality. And it actually, uh, I mean, I know there's some other ones on there that don't, uh, you don't hear all of the radiation events uh, hitting the detector, but this one sounds like it's skipping quite a few. Uh, I mean, the numbers do go up. I'm sure it has some uh, menu stuff in here that's uh, okay, but uh, I have messed around with it a little bit and I am not too impressed with it. Well, that was an interesting look at all those Geiger counters. It was interesting to see that the Rad IB20, the Radicode 101, and uh, the Hatchin, or the Hanchin, Han Han uh, those all read the same uh, microsieverts uh, for that last uh, uh, radium post for that, for that high uh, radioactivity source. It was interesting to see, because uh, it makes me wonder uh, who's right. So I don't know if uh, this detector is, uh, energy compensating just for uh, cesium-137, which is what this one was, um, or if it's uh, energy compensating for uh, all the different uh, sources of radiation, uh, because different uh, sources have different energy levels, and so it might just be calibrated to this, because I know a lot of these detectors, they use cesium-137 as a calibration source, because it's kind of like right in the middle of the energy spectrum of uh, gamma energies. And so that's why this is used as a calibration source because uh, even if something kind of under responds or over responds, at least it's somewhere right in the middle if they use this calibration source. So I don't know, it could be this one's right or it could be <laughs> that this one's right. Uh, I mean, the price difference on uh, these two is a bit different. I mean, this one's $150, this one's over two grand. So I don't know. It's, it's hard to say who's right. I mean, I tend to believe the one that's more expensive that's used by government agencies would be correct, uh, but maybe they're wrong. Uh, who knows? But I am going to say that uh, the Rad IB20 uh, is correct because uh, it's kind of gotten uh, voted, uh, you know, the other Geiger counters that all kind of said the same thing, even though it's, it's this one, the, my least favorite out of all of them. Um, you know, it, it sounds like uh, that 400 and 400 and, you know, 10 microsievert number is uh, closer than what this one was showing, which I th believe was like around the 200s. So interesting to see, but so if you found this video uh, informational and helpful in some capacity, uh, please leave a like, consider subscribing. I do a bunch of uh, videos uh, kind of like this. I usually don't do like Geiger counter reviews and I wouldn't actually call this a review. This was more of a testing. Uh, Cause I mean, I didn't dive deep into the menu systems of all these. Uh, I think I wanted to, but I realized that after uh, playing around with some of these, uh, they were kind of a, pain to get into their menu systems and to try and like turn off certain alarms or uh, see what's going on or change uh, change it from microsieverts to counts or to melorem or to any of those. And so uh, as much as I wanted to dive deep on uh, the menu systems in some of these, I just, I couldn't bring myself to do it. Uh, it's just kind of a pain to deal with stuff. I mean, that's why I really like, uh, you know, I, I know I got the Geiger counters from bettergeiger.com, uh, like the all these other ones, like the, you know, the GMC uh, 320 and the Hatchin and the Mira. Uh, I got those all from uh, the guy that makes these and um, to test, uh, you know, kind of head to head with them. And I like this one because it's simple. Okay, it's simple, to, simple and easy to use. Uh, the... Radi B20 is uh, also simple and easy to use, but it has way more settings in here that I did not get into uh, on this uh, test because I, you can switch it from counts per minute to counts per second, to melorem, to sievert, to grays, uh, to disintegrations, um, all kinds of stuff. And, and then for the Becquerels, 
you gotta switch to the Becquerel's. Uh, for the Becquerel's part, and for anything that's kind of like dependent upon disintegrations, you act can actually change the isotope that it's actually calibrated to, like cobalt-60 or americium-241 or all kinds of stuff. I just leave this one on um, cesium-137 because that seems to be uh, the most middle-of-the-road one I'm doing, and they just, uh, for the stuff that I'm doing, it's pretty uh, good for it. But anyway, I hope you learned something uh, about all these detectors and maybe that will help you uh, make a decision and what to buy uh, in the future going forward. You know, I like, I like doing this test and I'm hoping that uh, sometime in the future I can actually maybe do uh, another test of some different uh, detectors, uh, ones that people would want to know more about. Um, but I mean, I think this was a pretty good cross section of like really expensive to very affordable. Uh, I don't want to say cheap because I don't think this is cheap. I think this is actually well built. Uh, this is pretty cheap, but uh, it gave me a higher gamma reading than the better Geiger. So who's right? That's my biggest question. You know, it's like who is calibrated correctly? Um, but yeah, it was an inter interesting test. I didn't uh, run through any of this beforehand. I did it all on the fly. You know, like I said before, I kind of like, when I first got the box of Geiger counters, I went and like looked through them like quickly uh, just to make sure that they all turned on and actually responded to a radioactive source. Uh, that was as much uh, pre-testing as I did for this test. So it's interesting to see that, um, you know, given the different uh, radioactive sources, how they all responded to those, so. So if you found this video uh, useful in some capacity, uh, please give it a like, consider subscribing to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy. And sit still. Just thinking about coffee.